Today's video is brought to you by the lovely folk at Squarespace. One thing we take for granted in motorsport is the radio communications. Now, we as fans love it when a driver gets really angry over the team radio or hear a strategy call come through from the engineers. But if all of that fails, that could be critical for a race performance. So today I'm here at the MRTC to find out how all the radio communication is done. Multimap 2-1. It, 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 it. World champions! Woo! I'm Ken Rumbold, CEO of MRTC. Our world is communications in motorsport. My favourite story used to be that when we first started back in the 80s, a Formula One team, I think, had six radios and headsets. And the phrase was very simple. If you were somebody, you had a, a headset and a radio. Now, it's just like, if you haven't got a headset and a radio, you're absolutely nobody, because it's become such an important factor. Literally, we're involved in most major series around the world, doing F1 stuff in WEC and Le Mans, and things like Formula E, touring car championships around the world, GT championships. And it's the job of MRTC to set up and secure all of these radio connections, but not only for the driver and the team, but also so that radio feed can be distributed to multiple outputs, for example, to the TV broadcaster. On a normal race weekend, they'll arrive to the track a week before the race takes place and set up antenna masts and repeater stations around the circuit, which will either be using VHF or UHF transmissions, which will be looking after all the comms in and around the circuit. The World Endurance Championship, as an example, requires 500 different audio channels at a track alone, all supporting various teams, organizers, marshals, and the safety crew. A typical radio works off a 2.4 gigahertz band, which is actually what most race series use, but with Formula One, the cars are needing to send way more data, so not only just sending the radio, but the onboard camera feeds, live telemetry, with almost zero delay. So for this, they use a 10 gigahertz system. And when stationed in the garage, it automatically switches to a second wireless connection, operating at the 60 gigahertz wave, which means it can transmit data from the car at 1.9 gigabytes a second. That's quicker than most people's internet at home. <laughs> In the old days, everything was standalone, so the radio system, the onboard cameras, and gradually these things are blending together, molding together, effectively a network coming off the car, which will carry the data, the marshalling systems, voice radio. In Formula E, it's a centralised system, so it all comes through one central point, and then we distribute it out to the teams. Um, in other series, the teams are in control of their own systems. A typical team at the racetrack on something like Formula One is probably using 100 plus radios, intercoms, probably another 60 or 70 intercom units. But then, of course, you've got all the remote working. The back room, which is off site, should we say, intercom wise, probably a, as much intercom off site as there is on site. A lot of guys like the smaller in ear molded earpieces and again if they're wearing safety helmets obviously they're not able to wear full cans. And we've now perfected processes to do rapid turnarounds so we in somewhere like Le Mans we can actually produce ear molds for the people that forgot they were going to Le Mans. So we're going to take your impressions today. Um, a lot of drivers, engineers, mechanics they all wear custom molded earpieces. Um, this reduces general sort of weight that they have to wear when they're running around the garages. We'll start with the little machine that has a look inside your ears. Okay. Um, just basically to check for any deformations, any wax, any buildup, any blockages, things like that. So the next step is to drop one of these in each of your ears. Okay. It is just a foam block that just stops the silicon going all the way down to your eardrum. It feels quite weird, so he's used a little metal prodder to get it all the way in there and it got to the point where it felt a little bit like when you're doing a COVID test, you know, when you have to put something up your nose and it, it needs to go further up. It's sort of the same with this, where it went further than I thought it would. Try not to move your jaw or talk too much, otherwise it can change the shape of the mould, okay. which might not fit properly later on, so oh, it's good. That, so is that is because you're moving your jaw, it sort of moves your ear around? Or? Exactly, it just changes the shape of the canal. It's basically um, ear impression material, it's a dedicated silicon and it's quick drying, takes five to 10 minutes to set. It flows really nicely. And it's a bit like expanding builder's foam. So if you just wiggle your jaw for me, and just keep doing that, and basically I'll ease the mold out slowly. Oh, yeah. it's oddly satisfying. It's like a, it's like a plug, <laughs> the way it fits the ears, isn't it? As you get older, your ears and nose, I think are one of the few things that keep growing. Yeah. Um, so you'll find you'll do a set of molds for the next two years, they're great. Year three and four, they might feel odd. And then by year five and six, you think I'm probably need a new set. But then there are people who use them for 10 years. So it's just, I guess, your body shape in the way they're designed. Squarespace is the perfect tool if you're looking to create your own website without the need of knowing HTML or CSS or have any prior knowledge of building a website. 
Whether it's to show off your work portfolio or creating a new apparel website or making a new travel blog, you can build from thousands of templates and customize it to be completely unique to you and not looking like anyone else. And the best part is that if you head to squarespace.com, you can try out all these features with their free trial. So you can build up your website and get it ready for its launch. And when you're ready to launch it, head to squarespace.com forward slash Matt Amos and you'll save 10% off your final purchase of a website or domain. So whenever we get any earpieces in, they'll bring them upstairs and then you have to scan them to get them onto the system and then we send them to our manufacturer and then our manufacturer will take the scans and we'll build them from that. It's always fun when you um, get a, like an earpiece where you think, oh, I know them, I see my TV, I know the ears. <laughs> so my uh, ear mould sits on this scanner and then on the left, is this like a live projection creating a 3D model? Yeah, so this will be sent over to a manufacturer and then they will produce it from this image. So this is a, a typical set of uh, ear moulds, a connection like this so that the, the, the driver puts them in their ears under the helmet. Traditionally we use the, the phono connection because it's, it's durable. There is a, a lubricant to, to uh, put on ear moulds, but obviously needs must, it's just like if you spit on it, what's, what's the difference really? In some of the series now where they require uh, accelerometers within the ear, most dri professional drivers will probably have two, three sets a year, something like that. Simple, straightforward two-way radio. It looks like a, a commercially available device but the software inside has been heavily modified to, to fit our environment, shall we say, with noise suppression and things like this. And essentially it provides a connection for headsets, earpieces, whenever we provide a customer with a radio. We always lock it so they can't change channel. Talking around the track is, is straightforward bit. What you're trying to avoid is going further than the track and picking up possible interference from you know, many miles away. So again, we're trying to optimise the system so that it has adequate range, but not too much. A typical headset, obviously you can see this one is the current uh, McLaren F1. Connects to the radio that we spoke about. Noise cancelling microphone, which uh, you know, works to the, you know, to the levels that, that these engineers are having to work with in something like Formula One. Obviously in Formula E, life's a bit easier, but uh, you've still got the noise from wheel guns and stuff like this. You'll have a small number of people, of sort of senior management and senior engineers, who will probably listen to two cars, so it might be one headset with two radios. But in round figures, it's going to be the similar number of headsets to, to radios. Depending on the team, some teams like to put their own stickers, we paint them, or, uh, and then provide them yeah, uh, the opportunity to put their own stickers on. Other teams, um, we do the whole thing where it's, it's properly, uh, properly lacquered. But like all these things these days, the, the sponsor names change, as we all know, uh, quite frequently. So um, yeah, I mean, a lot, of, a lot of teams are, are going for a simple sticker. Effectively, it's a communications device similar to radio but but a wired communication so the modern with modern units are ip based so working over a network engineer plugs straight into here and has then got access to multiple channels simultaneously so that's the thing with radio you listen to one channel at a time you can scan several channels but you, you'll only listen to whatever you choose as your priority channel whereas with this i mean this one has 12 channels on the face but there's also another six options on the on the face so you can have 72 channels available to you in your ear if you could cope with that you can choose how much you listen to, how much you talk to, and also you've got independent volume control on every one of those channels. It's all tactics, it's all strategy. And even I notice now that we're, uh, we're actually supplying um, radios and this sort of stuff to Premier League football teams for their strategy people. Well, I don't know whether I should mention it, but you may remember some years ago there was a fuss in the, in the DTM in German touring cars where um, uh, the Audi boss made some statements over the air telling a driver to, um, to take out a competitor. It's quite funny because we'd actually gone to the event to do some modifications and updates on the audio. So the audio quality was absolutely perfect to the driver. Um, so when the um, when the boss tried to deny the fact that he'd told his driver to take out other people, it uh, didn't go down well. A big thanks to Ken, James, Ellen and all the folk here at the MRTC for showing us around and explaining how radio communications work in motorsport. If you want to learn anything more about the company, they are linked down in the description below. But that's all for now and I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, then make sure to click the like button down below. If you want to see any more videos on mine, you can do so by clicking over there on the left hand side. And if you're new here, then make sure to click subscribe. But thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.